Did I say solid? Yes. Solid, solid, Solids. And what do we mean by solids in the mathematical world, anybody? Like squares. No, but a square, like a square technically like a would be a, not a solid. Not a Three. Three dimensional, there we go. Now we're talking. Three dimensional shapes. Three D shapes. And we've got some special mathematical names for them. Let's just draw these down, and I will do my best to teach you how to draw these as best I can. I cannot promise anything because I've seen your work before and it's abysmal at best. Uh, the first one is a prism. Technically, does anybody know what defines something as a prism? By the way, here I'll give you, a, I'll give you one to look at. Um, you know, let's just do a rectangular prism. If you want to draw a nice rectangular prism, you can start with a rectangle here. Try to draw the same exact rectangle up above it a little bit, and then connect the corners. And you get yourself something. Kind of nice. You can do little dashed lines here. For the part you can't see. And if you really want, you could do some shading. Anybody, but what is it that makes something a prism? Anybody going once, going twice? Somebody? Anybody? They have parallel linear faces. Wow, did you read that out of the book? Yes. Parallel. parallel congruent bases. We'll get into a long discussion about bases a little bit sooner. A little bit later on. Not sooner. Now that's a rectangular prism. And if you'll notice, a rectangular prism is built of all rectangles. Hmm, interesting. Name. Wow. Rectangular prism. Now, the deal with that, though, is don't get that in your mind, because if I was building a triangular prism, prisms are named based on their bases. You have to then start with a triangle. Let's just go with an easy one. Here's a triangle. If you draw another triangle just like it, up and over, and connect the corresponding sides, you will get a triangular prism there. Should I shave that? Yes, why not? Why not? Now, with that being said, some things you need to know about parts of a prism. The three things you need to know are prisms have faces, they have vertices, and they have edges. The difference between them would be what? What is a face of a prism? Warren? Uh, yeah, we usually call that the sides. For example, on this rectangular prism, how many faces does it have? And the hard part about this is you have to count the ones you can't see as well. You, know, you can see the top, you can see the front, you can see the right side, but you also have this back, left side, and bottom, which would make how many faces, Sophia? Yeah, this thing has six faces. One, two, three, four back there, five here, and six on the bottom. Which, how about vertices? What are they? Another word we could use for vertices. Corner is what, Layton? Corners. Yeah, corners. And how many corners would this shape have? If I was looking for vertices. By the way, the singular vertices is vertex. Vertices, Madison? Six. Six. 
one, two, three, four, five, six. Six vertices. And then an edge is a little harder to define. Sedges have edges. Joseph and edges. The uh, lines. Kind of. It's the places where sides meet. That's bony, right? B E T, right? Yes. The other B. So if you were looking for the edges of, let's say, this triangular prism, which I should label as a triangular prism. If you're looking for its edges, you've got one, two, three, four, this one you can't see, five, six, seven, another one you can't see, eight, and that one you can't see there. This one would have nine edges. How many edges on my rectangular prism there? How many edges we got there? How many edges, John Murray? How many edges on this bad boy right here? Twelve. One, two, three, four going parallel this way. Two, three, four parallel going that way. And four going vertical right there. Twelve edges. And how's about, ladies and gentlemen, if I asked you to draw an octagonal prism? Could we do that? Absolutely. Notice not every shape on an octagonal prism is an octagon. Only the base and the top and the bottom. Uh-oh, Emma? Why is it called an octagonal prism? Like why isn't the person an octagonal prism? Well, because octagonal, I believe if you were in English class, an octagonal describing prism would make it an adjective. Do you put ALs at the end of adjectives? Abnormal. Huh? If you're abnormal, formal, awkward, awkward old. I don't know. They just do. That's just what it is. So here's our octagon. Let's see if we can do this here. Um, I'm just going to go like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This one I'm. Uh, I'm going to do it in a different color. Next to it. Just make it work. Draw the same, oh, that's not a very good octagon. It looks good from the side. Do the same octagon. Let's do it right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now I'll change colors back so I can see. Connect the corresponding vertices. This would go here. This would go here. Here. Oh, that's not right. We, sorry, this one would go here. This one would go here. This one would go here. You probably can't see any of these. This would go across here. But this one would go across here. And darken it this. I don't know. That looked like an octagonal prism. We probably need to do this a little better. How's that? That's it. We're, we got to move on. Can we move on? That's not now, what makes a prism different than a pyramid? Which is we're next on our list of solids. A prism, again, named for its base, but a prism, without reading from the book, in generic layman's term, a prism would be. What happened, Sophia? Um, it's a who? A we already had that. Was, that was a uh, prism. Oh. Oh, that's fine. I am on my B main. Here we go. Let's try this. Let's go pyramid. You see the pyramids in Egypt? These Mondays are always tough. What makes something a pyramid? Bivens. 
What do you know about the pyramids in Egypt? What do they look like? They usually look a little like. Yeah, and then they do what? Triangles that do what? They come to a point. And usually the triangles are the good way they are. The sides are triangles. So if we're doing like a pyramid, which is like a square pyramid, you kind of have to draw your square kind of three-dimensional here. And then if you really want to draw a pyramid, just put a point up top and connect all the vertices to that point. Point, point, point. And magically, as if... Oh, I think it's a little big. Let's try that later. And again, you could shade it. Shading just kind of moves a little bit. And that would be a square pyramid. Uh, vertices on a square pyramid? Anybody going once, going twice? Cassandra, how many vertices on that square pyramid? Five. How many edges on that square pyramid? Grace? Eight. How many faces? Andrew? Six. Faces, Andrew? Five. Five. The bottom and then the four sides. Now, I will take request. What kind of pyramid should my next one be, John? Give me something I want to challenge. I already got the rectangular pyramid. And don't tell me triangle because that's not a challenge. I want something hard. Go with decahedron? No, I'm not going with decahedron. Pentagonal, hexagonal. Hexagonal. So here, let's try the hexagonal pyramid. So we got this a six sided shape. And again, you have to kind of do it squash because when it sits there three dimensionally, it doesn't like it. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six. Put a dot up there. All vertices to that. Kind of got to see which ones are in the back, which ones are in the front. You know, back when I was a kid, when they would actually let kids be kids, now you kids, you know, you're all. Oh, they're going to get hurt. They fall. We used to have on the playground this little thing called the witch's hat, which would look like this. Which, there was a pole that went through the middle, and you could stand on these sides here, and the thing would just slam from one side to the other. And sometimes, if you're lucky, you'd get your fingers crunched in. Oh, yeah. Now you can't even have a slide in the middle. Wait, did you say What kind of fun is it to be a kid, huh? No more skis. No more merry-go-rounds, man. We used to get a merry-go-round going like 100 miles an hour until you have to fly off. How about this one? How many sides to the hex? Oh, by the way, again, names for the shape that makes up its bottom. It's a hexagonal pyramid. You know, this was this was be a square pyramid. I should use a different point. Uh, how many sides to the hexagonal pyramid? Emily? Sides on the hexagonal one. Um, six. Plus the bottom? Oh, it's seven. I should have said faces, yeah. Seven faces. Seven faces. How many edges? Sir Grace? Twelve, and how many? What am I missing? Vertices. Vertices, which would be how many? Aaron. How many did you say? Wait, where'd, you, where'd you go? How many? Seven. Seven. Yes, by all means. Now, what's next? You ask. What's, what's next? next? Yeah. You gotta get going. We got so much. Uh, how about a cylinder? 
which is nothing more than a circular prism, but we call that a cylinder. We'll go fast now because that's, there's not really too much to do in the way of that. Uh, a cylinder, which is also what we call a nice little can. Just start with your little oval. Cylinder. A, 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 can. Sometimes it's nice to shade those a little bit. How many vertices on a cylinder, Chase? And then if you take a cylinder and you make a uh, take a cylinder and make a pyramid out of it, what is that called? There's a little point up here to connect the things here. A cone. It is a cone. And the last but not least solid here is a sphere. There's nothing more to sphere here. How do you get a little round thing like that, which is a circle, to make it look three-dimensional? One simple little thing is, Madison? Yeah, dotted line. It would like make a little dotted line. Yeah, like a little oval sort of thing. For some reason, that gives you the optical illusion that that is a round sort of thing. Sphere. Or if you can shave, which is a big ball, three dimensional shape ball. There's got to be something more. I'm very excited. There's talking that a Popeyes is going in South Dakota here. That is one of the huh? Congratulations. Isn't that right? Are you going to You can put this in your notes and on label on top of it. Um, I guess we'll call this isometric. Let me see if I can pull one up here. Isometric. talk or the book talks about isometric what they are talking about is like the three-dimensional drawing of shapes three this little shape right here is an isometric drawing of I don't know what you would call that thing it is stairs, I guess, put on its side. Now, if I asked you what the what shape the base is, you'd have to tell me it's in the shape of a kind of like a backwards F, wouldn't you? Oh yeah. But the book is going to ask you to take a look at an isometric shape and be able to oh, 
This is failure again. I'm sorry. It's okay. I don't we like it now. how you apologize. Well, I guess I could. I guess I could. Um, I take an isometric shape and be able to draw what the right side of it would look like, what the left side of it would look like, and what the top of that shape would look like, if you were staring at it right from those directions or angles. Let's say, let's look at the top first. You know, if you were looking directly down on top of this shape, what would you actually see? See here, in this isometric view, you can see all sides of it. Okay, this right here is the right side of the shape, is it not? Yes. Right side. This is the left side of the shape, and you can only see part of the left side. There's parts you can't see. And then this right here, see here, see here, this is, I don't want that, this is the top of the shape. So if I were asked you to draw what you'd see if you were looking directly straight down on that shape, what would it look like, Warren? It would look like the backwards F. And if I asked you to draw it here, by the way, these, your little things are exactly a half of an inch, so we could draw this like that. What is, if here's my F, if I am drawing this F, if I am drawing this F right here on my little grid, what are its dimensions? Or how far is it from here to here? Does it say three? No, but the bottom is the same length. Does it say three? Yeah. So it says three inches. So if each of these are a half an inch, you would go what? Here's one inch, two inch, three inch. You're looking down on that shape and you're going to go black. How about that? Or that covers my eyes. This would be this line right here. What's this length from here to here? Two inches, right? Is it two inches? Yes. yes. Thank you. Just patient, kids. And if you were smart, you would do it each a little bit, but I'll let you get away with this. How long is each step? What's this distance from here to here? Anybody? One inch. One inch. Across like that. How far in is it? What does this say? I can't read it down my hand. Is it a half an inch? Or what's this say right here? What does this say in here? One, one, one inch. inch. One inch. So I go one inch here. This is one inch here. It's a half inch here. And one inch there. I think I missed something. What did I miss? It's this is what you would see if you were looking directly down at the top of the shape. You would not see anything else but that shape just like that. I don't know why it doesn't look exactly right. Probably because my dimensions are a little off. If you are looking at the right side of this shape, which is this right here, it, it will just look like what? Is it a square? Is this three and three? Is it? Yeah. I can't see the dimensions. So it would look like this. One, two, three. One, two, three. Maybe, since I can draw straight lines right here. So three inches would look like this. One, two, three, right? One, two, three. One, two, three. And one, two, three. Oh, good. Copied, uh, a copier is down. Now, the one other thing, though, you have to understand here, children, is this. This is my right side. But if there are little indentations and things on the side that you can't see, you need to show those as dashed lines. So in reality, if you're looking at the right side of this, you can't see them, but you know that this right side right here, you have to put a dashed line like this. So you know there are some edges back there that you can't see. And there's another edge back here that you can't see. That would be nice little dashed lines. You can't see them, but they are there. This edge and that edge. Are you with me on that? Yeah. Now, finally, the fun one, the left side. 
What is the left side going to look like? I wish I had the shape there. It actually, it would be a rectangle as well. That's going to be, uh, how wide is this from here to here? Two inches? Yeah, two inches. Two inches by three inches, but then there's going to be a whole bunch of lines you can't see. Two inches. Yeah, because if you look... Yeah, because yeah. you got this, you would see these sides sticking, jutting out there. You'd still be able to see them. It is, what did I say? One. Two inches by three inches. One, two, three. Two inches. Because you'd still get the outline of a rectangle like that. Wait, I'm still confused why it would be two inches. Because there's one inch from here to here, and then a half inch and a half inch there. So how would that make it two inches? Oh, one plus a half plus a half. Then, because you're looking at the left side here, you will see this line right here, which is going to look like a half inch like this, correct? Wait, why is this not? Is it a half inch or is that? That's one inch, isn't it? You will see that one inch line, which is this line right here. You'll also see a line right here, a half inch over from that. That is what you would see from the left side. I wish I had that shape here because then I could show you what it looks like. But that is what you would see, correct? If I spun that. You'd see this little rectangle here, which is this rectangle. Then you'd see that line, if it's a corner. And then you'd see the other back line. Because the book will ask you to draw. Wait, what's the fine one? Shall we? Let me say yes. Let's do Yes, let's yes, do shall. I won't ask you right away, but I will ask you eventually. Or maybe I'll just ask you. Look at page 290. 290. Are you with me? Look at practice letter A. Or letter E, sorry, not A. Not one. If I asked you to draw the top, the right side, and the left side, I guess there is no front. Left side, right side, top of that, what would they look like? Sketch me right now what you'd see from the top, from the left side, and from the right side. Letter E. It's the T shape. Oh. The T shaped thing, which looks a little like this. T, 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 T. You should be done. It shouldn't take you that long. Is that Grace, you done? No, you don't have to draw. I mean, you don't have to draw squares. Just sketch it. What would the top look like, Joseph? What's the top look like? If you're looking directly down on top of this, what would it look like? Uh, a 3D T. Not a 3D T. <laughs> huh? It would look like just a flat T, right? If you're looking just at the top of that, top of this, which is this, it just looks like this. Here's the top. I guess I ran out of room. That's the top. You're not going to see any other lines other than that right there. If you were looking at the right side of this, which would be this, what would that look like? Who thinks they are? Andrew! Uh, a square then a rectangle. So a square on the right side. Like this? Yeah. And, and then, then a rectangle like this. Yeah. You are absolutely positively correct. Because this little thing comes from this right here, and then this connects and goes right there. That would be Mr. Right Side. This is the top. What would the left side look like? Which would be what color shall we use for that? You'd see this, you'd see this, and you'd see that. 
What would that look like? Emma? Right. Maybe one long rectangle, and then in the middle of it would be the square for this. This would fall right in the middle of it. You would see nothing else other than that. Does that make any sense? Yes. It does or it doesn't? I don't know where they ask you that. And now, just for fun, because we have just a little bit of time. Isometric drawing paper and ask you to construct the world's most complicated shape. No, don't, don't draw anything on that. I'll give you a little uh, A small yet short tutorial on isometrics. Yeah. But everybody will survive. Let's pick a letter or a number. Can we do this? I would not. Why? Thank you. Pick a letter that doesn't have a round edge in it. O does have a round edge. L. No, L is too easy. A. Oh, let's do an E. Now, here is the deal. What happened here? Let's do the letter E. Think about what the letter E looks like if you're doing a block letter E. Right? Yes. yes. It does help if you do straight lines, but I'll just do it this way. Let's do that. Let's say I was looking not, let's say I was looking at this corner right here. Oh, I don't want that. And I was going to do an isometric of it. Right. The one thing to remember is that you're up, if you're doing up lines, they're always straight up and down. But any other line is going on an angle this way and an angle that way. Okay, so let's do this corner. We'll start with this corner and we'll put that corner right somewhere in the middle. It doesn't really matter to you. Let's make Mr. Letter E, well, let's make him two of these straight lines high. Are you with me? That's how thick. That's how thick our letter E is going to be. But go band. I didn't say you have to stay. Now let's draw this side right here. Start at this point right here, ladies and or gentlemen. Go two little dots wide. And make a two little dot line. We are probably going to run out of time. It's okay. What did we just draw? If you could see the three dimensional of this, you just drew this. Except you turned it and spun it around a little bit. Now let's draw this side from here to here. How wide would you suppose that is? All sides go on an angle. We'll make it. How many dots should we go? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, well five dots wide going in both these two directions. Oh, wait. So far, so good? Yes. Can you copy that? Notice you're always drawing on a line. You'll never go, you're never going rogue and not following the line pattern. So now let's draw. Well, I guess we could. I guess we could put this line in for right now, which would be this corner right here, this corner right here, and you're going to go off on this direction. 
I don't know how far it should go yet. Let's just draw one in easily that way. I don't know how far it goes yet because we haven't really got measurements here. So we're here at this. Let's go to this point, which is this point. Make this line here, which will stop right here. Can anybody see the eat? How much time do we have? Four minutes. Enough time. Enough time. And then we'll go just one square up, which is this little chunk right here. And back two more blocks to get the middle part of my E. So far so good. And we'll make it two wide going back this way. Every line that isn't a thickness line goes on the same angle here, and which means this is going to go this way. Uh, now we're getting somewhere. This is going to go this way. Oh, I was right on the money, kids. How about that? You've got something. Well, we're missing a few things. We've got to make this thickness here and this thickness here. We've got to make this thickness here. And this thickness here gets hit behind this thing here. But it does go across like that. And then we've got this line going straight down here. This line going straight down here. And this one. Oh, you know what? I made my E too wide tonight. Why didn't somebody tell me that? No, no. We're going to fix it. Why is it? Why is it going to be erased? Oh, because I drew it so many times. My E was just a little too long. I think, wasn't it? Yeah. Who knew that? I just didn't want to tell me. So we got this here, this here, and this here. There we go. Now my E is all over that. And unfortunately, look at that. It's an easel and then it's also an M. Just stop.